Hello, this is Brother Ralph speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and check out our other videos. Also, check out our website at www.christwithin.com, where you can keep up to date with us, send us an email, or leave us a donation. Always watch these videos fully alert with a mindset of prayer. Have a pencil and paper ready and take notes. Again, we thank you for your continual support by watching these videos. God bless. I want to show you guys something. You gotta understand this. Now watch this. Now this guy has a heart. Okay? He has a heart. But he is not conscious. He has a heart. He thinks he's all mine up here, all brain. The Bible describes this that his thoughts, this is his mind up here. See this here? This is his mind. But his thoughts are down here in his heart. His thoughts is down in his heart. This is his heart. Now, one of the tactics of the enemy is to get us to not see, to be still, and use our mind to go into the realm of the subconscious mind. We have to descend to where these thoughts are at. If you don't descend to where these thoughts are at, you can never see these thoughts. So what I'm going to show you in the Bible is that the Bible is describing the conscious mind and what our 21st psychologists or what they call the subconscious mind. The conscious mind and the subconscious mind. So a person can say they believe in God, but down in their heart, they don't. So they say one thing with their mouth, but their heart, their actions is showing something else. Okay? So if you don't ever sit before God and search out to see what's in your heart, then your heart will manifest all the time. I sometimes will call it the unconscious conscious. It's always working. Paul said that over in, over in Romans. Romans chapter 7, he said, But I see a different law in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin which is in my members. He saw something waging war against his mind. It's always going to be down there waging war against the mind. It is something in the body. It's in the heart of the body. And he said, wretched man that I am, who's going to set me free from the body of this death? What Paul was describing was the condition of the heart. Well, the heart is, if I can use this type of semantics, hopefully, is spread out throughout the body what you would call engrafted within the cells of the human body. That's where the thoughts are. They're in the cells of the body. That's where the heart is. That's the reason why the cells in the human body all have antennas and very open to receiving messages. This is how you can reprogram the heart. So I know that may sound a little bit sci-fi, but this is what Paul was describing when he was describing a different law that was working in the members of his body. It always worked down there. He said, wretched man that I am, who's going to set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, sin. on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God. I'm doing the will of God. I'm loving God with all my heart. I'm finding the mystery Christ. But on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. My flesh is always serving the law of sin. Until you clear, you purge that program out, that 
program is going to always serve. You got to purge it out. That program will always serve the law of sin. It will always break the law. It will always talk to you from your body, called the body of sin. It will always speak to you. So I have to turn to Christ to be able to purge out this law of sin that is in my body. I got to turn to Christ. I have to turn to Christ. So here's the mind up here, and here's the heart down here. So a lot of people walking around today in the 21st century, they're not conscious there's a God. They're not even conscious that they're going to die and go to hell. So you see, there's something else that is working in their heart that they're not even aware of. There's some type of entity, some type of intelligence, some type of mind, some type of law that is at work in the members that people of the world are not even conscious of. So we can see you got people conscious, but there's something unconscious that is conscious working in them, talking to them, guiding them, directing them, feeding them, motivating them, causing them to do things contrary to God. Okay? y'all. So there's a part, when the Bible is describing the heart, it's talking about something that is not visibly seen or you can audibly hear it. Because they only speak from the heart. They speak very subtly from the heart once they get, when they, when the powers of darkness get rooted in your heart, they speak very quietly and they guide you. So there's a part of you that you're not conscious of. So the scripture says, he says, search me, O God. God, you have to show me where these things are at. And the Bible says, by the spirit of God, we put them to death. Okay? Okay, now, let's see if we can find this teaching in the Bible. Okay, turn to Psalms 14.1. And in Psalms 14.1, notice this, Psalms 14.1, The fool has said in his heart, there is no what? There's no God. You see this? Where's the fool saying it? He's saying it in his heart. If you walk up to that person, that person tell you there is a God. But in his heart, he's saying there is no what? God. You remember what the prophet says, do not trust the brother, be on guard against your neighbor. Why they say peace, they set a what? Ambush. So there you got something on the surface that looked good, but an ambush is underneath, is working underneath. The Bible said they profess that they know God over in Titus. It says this over in Titus. They profess, it's Titus chapter 1. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. You're going to find out what defiles a man. He says, they profess to know God. They profess to know God, but by their deeds, they deny him, being detestable, disobedient, and worthless for any good deed. In other words, God has rejected them. So you got... They profess, but their actions are saying something contrary to their profession. Their lifestyle contradicts what they speak. So we have the conscience, and then we have the subconscious. The conscious mind is saying one thing, the subconscious mind is doing something else. So the fool can say he believes in God, but down in his heart he said there is no God. And you're going to see this all throughout the Bible. That's the reason why you can, you can be you can actually be deceived and not even know you deceived. You won't even know it because you have not, you have not looked at your heart. Now, so the Bible tells us to watch over our heart, to purify our heart. Why? Because if we are doing that, we will shut down this type of delusion, this type of defilement. Once this defilement sets in the mind then, and you practice this, then you will never see your heart if you've never sit before God. And God will render to you according to your deed. You'll never see your heart. You'll never see your heart. You'll never see your heart. You'll see something wrong, but there will be some type of lie that will tell you it is all right for you to do what you do. And usually that's what false teachers come in. Paul said they have seared their conscience as with a branding, branding iron. The false teachers are giving people doctrines so that they can be secure in sin and rebellion and wickedness and porn and greed. They can be secure and they never see their heart. They think it's all right to have that type of lifestyle while they go to church. So, the Bible says in Psalms 
14.1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now you see that? Now look in Psalms 27.8. Psalms 27.8. Notice what he says. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall what? I shall seek. When you said, seek my face, my heart said, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. But you're going to do this with your what? With your heart. God needs all your heart. You're supposed to love the Lord thy God with all your heart. This is how you come to God, with all your heart. Because you see, there's something down in your heart you're not aware of. So you got to be sensitive to your heart. Because what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth, is going to come out of your actions. You can't hide it. It will come up. It will surface. And wretched man that I am, who's going to set me free from this wicked heart? Who's going to set me free from this wicked nature? Thanks be to God. Through Christ Jesus now, I can, through the Spirit of Christ, be led by the Spirit to put to death the deeds of the flesh that are operating in my heart. I can put to death this stuff that's been working in my heart. I can ask God to search my heart and show what's in my heart so I can purify. Because if I cannot, if I come to the Word and I'm having a problem with a verse, I can't see the verse or I can't do the verses because that verse was written by the Spirit of God as something in my heart that's blocking me from being able to obey that verse. Are you all listening to what I'm saying? It's something blocking me. I cannot do it. And so if I cannot do those, see, if, I, if something has heart in my heart, then I can't do that verse. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have eyes, but they cannot see. What is he describing? Render the hearts of this people dull. They cannot see God. They have played with so much religion, they cannot see their heart. They can't even hear the Spirit of God speak to them. Are you all with me? Okay, now, look in Psalms 36. Now watch this. In Psalms 36, verse 1. Transgression speaks to the ungodly within his what? From inside of his heart. Does he really know those voices that are talking to them are sin and transgression? Does he really, really know that these voices, are, he has no understanding because they're in there and they sound like him and they talk to him he doesn't even know. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So what is telling the fool that there is no God? Transgression. Voices down in his heart that's telling him there is no God. And there is no judgment. There is no hell. There is no destruction. You can do what you want to do and live the way you want to live. There is no God. This is talking down in his heart. He cannot see it. He cannot understand what it is because it sounds exactly like his thoughts. Transgression speaks. Sin is speaking. Sin is speaking. You remember Paul said, who's going to set me free from this body of this death? He was saying there's something that's always serving the law of sin. It is some wicked thoughts. And Paul said the way I can deal with these wicked thoughts is by using my spirit to deal with them. I have to journey in that plane, in that dominion. I have to journey in that matrix where they live and begin to dissect them, destroy them, take them captive and cast them out and purify my spirit, soul and body for the day of the Lord. Now you all understand what I'm saying. Now you see this? Transgression is speaking where? Within the ungodly. It speaks inside them, within his heart. And when it speaks inside and within his heart, it's talking inside of his heart. He's not conscious of it, it's talking inside of his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. Because look, see, look at this. Look at, they blinding the eyes of his heart. See this? They blinding the eyes of his heart that he sees no fear, has no fear of God. He has no fear of God. This thing bounces back into his heart it comes down, and it is coming from here, this stronghold. His thoughts, all of his thoughts are there. So the fool has said, in his heart, there is no God. And the ungodly transgressions is speaking in his heart, 
and saying there is no God. See, this is all going on in your heart. And so we have the world, we have America, we have the world walking around and people have no fear of God and people in the church have no fear of God and people in the church since they believe that their salvation is saying their prayers, reading their Bible and scriptures all over the house and scriptures all over their car and going to Christian concerts, going to church, fasting. They think that they are right with God. But something keeps coming up out of their mouth and their actions to say continuously in their presence, there's no God. And when it comes up and you practice it, it literally blinds your mind to the word. Blinds your mind to your actions. It hardens your heart to reality that there is a God. There is a judge. There is a righteous judge. Look with me in Psalms 40 verse 8. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my what? So if I can get the law in my heart, I can discern between the law of sin and death. If I can get the law of Christ, the word of Christ in my heart, I can discern the law of sin and death. O wretched man that I am, who's going to set me free from this body, this wickedness that is down in the body, it's called the body of sin, that occupies the heart. Who's going to set me free from this? Christ came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. The spirit of Christ, now I can turn to my spirit to deal with what's down in my heart. But I have to turn to my spirit, and my spirit, I got to be still, I got to be in an environment to be still before God so God can show me what's in my heart. People accepted Christ and they never repented of sin in their heart and they still falling in sin. Preachers, teachers, pastors, pedophilia, dope smokers, homosexuals, adulterers, porn, pastors watching porn. They cannot, it's in the, when they stop to look at what's going on, this stuff has been in their heart. They never repented of it. It's been there ancestrally came down through their fathers and their mothers and they they don't understand why they got the stronghold they cannot control their mind they got compulsions to watch the programs they watch because the thing that is in them that's leading them to watch it is something vile and wicked and it controls their mind and leads them to watch it so it can strengthen itself in their heart it's all in the heart these things are running from inside the human being. They're running down in the subconscious mind in the heart. They're in the heart, working people from inside the heart. And if you do not know how to be still before God and sit before God and get on your face before God and search your heart so that you can see these things to purge this stuff out of your heart, you know what? It's going to continue to control your life. Now watch this, guys. So we see that you got to put the word in your heart. Look in Psalms 40, verse 11. You, O Lord, will not withhold your compassion from me. Your loving kindness, your truth will continually preserve me. For evils beyond number have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to what? See that? I can't see. I have no discernment. I can't see. They are more numerous than the hairs of my head and my heart, my heart, my heart has failed me. I cannot see what I'm doing. I'm walking in darkness. My heart has failed me. Something has my heart. I can't see, Lord. I cannot see. I have no discernment. If you're not down there spending time with God, going and submerging and sitting before God, asking God to watch over your heart and you watching over your heart, you see, see the modern day, this modern day Christianity today, they say you can watch anything, listen to anything, you can partake anything because you're saved. You said a prayer, so therefore you don't even have to watch over your heart. Let anything come into your heart. Listen to anything, watch anything, say anything out of your mouth. You don't have to watch over your heart. And the Bible says you're supposed to love God with all your heart. To enter the kingdom of God. And today, they, that's not a requirement. You, they don't even know what the heart is. So the heart is a submerged environment of thoughts or activity that are lodged down there within what we would call in our modern day terminology, the subconscious. It's a conscious that is sub 
that is always, Paul was describing over in Romans, always speaking. It always serves the law of sin. All it wants to do is sin. And if you are not sitting before God, watching over that area of your life, that area will spring up and cause you to sin, to transgress. So let, let me show you this. Let me show you this. When God says he's going to give you a heart, let me show you this. Watch this now. Are you all with me? This is how it works. See, God says, I'm going to put a new heart in you and I'm going to put a new spirit in you, right? Okay. So what, what is he doing? Well, Paul said that Paul was describing over there in Romans about I joyfully concur with the law of God in the what man? Inner man. I'm going into the inner man. I'm going down there where they at. They're in the body of sin. I can't see them. They are hidden beneath the exterior of the human physiology or the human anatomy. They're hidden below that level, Paul said. They're in there. They are all in that body. Now, I a joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. I'm going down there in the inner man where they at because I got to get on their level. That's what he was saying. That's sitting before God. So this is how it works. Y'all see this up here. Now, watch this. See, Christ comes into your life and becomes your heart. I love God with all my heart. So Christ, and gives, Christ comes in and gives you a heart. I'm going to put my heart in them. I'm going to put my spirit in them. So Christ comes and gives you a heart. Now, out of Christ's heart, you can deal with this body of sin. That's what Paul is saying. See, with Christ's heart, Christ's spirit, now you can deal with this transgression and this body of sin that is taking you over. So, you are, so since you're operating out of Christ, you're operating out of righteousness. You're not trying to become righteous. You're operating out of righteousness because you believe that Christ came to take away sin. So Christ, you see this right here? Christ, is, God gives you a new heart. And that heart is Christ. Now, I, don't, I joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man. He's talking about, I'm going to Christ to be able to deal with these invisible aliens, invisible trolls. I'm going to Christ to, to deal with these things because they are hidden in the body under the exterior of the human anatomy. They're trapped within the cells of the body, controlling the chemistry, the mind. They're controlling everything in the body. They're affecting the health of the body. And now I have Christ to go in there. I have Christ to go down in there to deal with them. That's, you're going to have to be, you got to slow your whole life down. You got to change your whole schedule to be able to slow down so that you can walk with Christ to deal with this stuff. Spending time with God. You can't be tuning in to HBO in this field and thinking you having your heart purified. That's not how it works. Everyone who sets his hope on him purifies himself just as he's pure. What is he purifying? See, I got my hope set on Christ to purify me. I got a body of sin. I said, I'm looking to Christ, so I'm operating out of Christ. My hope is fixed on him. Christ's life, Christ is my life. I recognize it. So I want to be saved. If I want to be saved, then what I want to be saved from? I want to be saved from this sin that's destroying me. So I'm going to, so God gives me Christ and out of Christ, I begin this process of washing out these impurities. I'm washing out these impurities. I'm coming to Christ and I'm washing out of these impurities. So I'm operating from a position. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. I'm operating from a position of righteousness. I'm operating from a position of purity because he's pure. So I'm using his purity. I'm using his righteousness. I'm using his holiness. To undo unrighteousness, impurity, and unholiness. That's what I'm doing. I'm operating out of Christ. You see? So Christ is your life. So I'm operating out of Christ to put to death the deeds of the flesh. I'm operating out of Christ to put to death the deeds of the flesh. And if I am not putting to death the deeds of the flesh, it's because I am not operating out of Christ. That's a sign that you're an unbeliever. You don't, you don't get free. Because, see, you, you got to stop. You, now, if you have a love for the world and, and you, and you want to be like the world, you will, God won't reveal nothing. He resists the proud and he gives only this kind of grace and mercy to the humble. Now, watch this. So you operating from Christ to deal with the body of sin. You operating from Christ. So, you, so now you operating out of Christ's heart, the heart of Jesus. You operating out of the heart, the spirit, and the heart of Christ to put to death that stuff that is in your body.
that's right up under the exterior of your body, trapped within millions of your cells. They trapped within millions of your DNA. They are engrafted in a lot of your blood and in your flesh. That's why Paul said flesh and blood shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said you got to be born of the spirit to inherit the kingdom of God. You got to begin to recognize that you got to be one with the spirit to deal with the flesh because the flesh won't inherit the kingdom of God. The flesh and blood, the contaminated part of your DNA will not have any, anything to do with the kingdom of God. Okay, so the heart. So that you understand that, right? Christ is, is you, we come into Christ. So I want, I say, Lord, why? I want to spend eternity with God. And this, does this sound like works? To see God with a whole heart and repent and walk in love and loving God? You see, this heart of church guy, he got you doing everything, but, but they got you doing everything but seeking God. Working, making money, and making you, thinking you're secure because you go to church. And you're saying your prayers and you're reading your Bibles, but you don't ever take the time out to sit before God. You can't sit under the word. 30 minutes in the word. 25 minutes for preacher, and you're going to be able to deal with the world out there for the seven, seven days you're going to deal with the world. And you don't have any time, you don't take any time to sit before God. So I'm taking Christ's heart, and I'm going to take Jesus' heart, Jesus' love for me, and I'm going to start dealing with everything that is not love. Now watch this. Now, you, are you with me? We have the mind of Christ. He's given us the mind of Christ. It's just to find the mind. We already have the mind of Christ. To find the mind of Christ, we need to begin to operate by faith that he's there. Christ is in you by faith. You got to operate by faith and start repenting. Faith was he who called you and he will bring it to what? He's going to bring it to pass. Okay. So look in Psalms 44. Look at Psalms 44. Verse, verse 20. Notice what he says. If we had forgotten the name of our God or extended our hands to a strange God, would not God find this out? For he knows the secrets of the what? Who knows them? God knows the secrets of your heart. You can't hide nothing from God. You cannot hide anything from God. All the little stuff you're doing when the pastor's not looking and your wife is not looking and your husband is not looking. Oh, the, see, there's no fear of God in you. That's why you do it. You're hiding it from everybody. You don't want nobody to see what you're doing behind closed doors. All the little tricks and things you be doing, all the little programs you're watching, you will not dare let anybody see you watching that in church. You won't watch it. You won't bring it in the church building, but you let it come into your temple, which is the real church, your body. All the little tricks and sneaks, and sneak peeks and everything and the pedophilia and porn, everything you are doing in secret, God sees it. You cannot hide it from God. But you know what the fool says in his heart? All these foolish, they call them the foolish virgins, these foolish people in church today. They say there is no God judging them. There is no God watching them. They go and do it anyway. They got a, a, a false security. They can do it. So he knows the secrets of the what? The heart. So, so the heart, he can look down and see what's in the heart. And if you store something in your heart, and you, and that's why God said you got to come with all your heart. You got to love him. You got to come with all your heart. If you store something down there in your heart, he knows it's down there. He sees it. He knows it's down there. Now, if you don't go down there and clean it out, then he is going to judge you with that deception you allow to live in your heart. That transgression you allow to live in your heart, he is going to judge you with that transgression because you're not using his standard, his righteous standard to look at your heart. And if you purify your heart, you'll be ready for him when you die. But if you don't purify your heart and you believe you're saved because you said a prayer and you shook the pastor's hand, then you ain't going to be ready for him when you die. And he's going to use the same judgment. He's going to say, you've been on the earth for 30 years and you've never repented of rebellion and deceit. All these wives that can't submit to their husbands and all these husbands that cannot love their wives and they've been doing it for years. They're practicing rebellion and sin. Well, look at this. So he knows your secret. So if you want to hide something, you're a fool because you don't believe he sees it. 
I won't let mom see it. I won't let dad see it. I won't let nobody in the church see it. I'm going to sneak out the back door, sneak into the hotel. I'm going to be sneaking somewhere. And the reason why you're sneaking, you want nobody to know your business is because you're a fool. You don't even know God sees everything. The fool says in his heart, there is no consequences for what I'm getting ready to do. He's the one that says there's no consequence. I'm getting ready to do something and there is not going to be, I'm going to have some pleasure. He's the one that said there is no God. So we sneak and do things because we don't believe he exists. And there's not going to be any judgment for what I do. That's the spirit of a fool. That's the spirit of an ungodly person. The Bible says the ungodly, the transgression speaks in his heart. And he says the ungodly has no fear of God before his eyes. None. Just do it. That's what the scriptures are teaching. Now look at this. So that heart, look at the heart. Now look at this. Look in Psalms 51. Hello, this is Brother Ralph speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and check out our other videos. Also, check out our website at www.christwithin.com where you can keep up to date with us, send us an email, or leave us a donation. Always watch these videos fully alert with a mindset of prayer. Have a pencil and paper ready and take notes. Again, we thank you for your continual support by watching these videos. God bless. Look in Psalms 51, verse 10. Notice this. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart. Wash out my heart. And renew a steadfast spirit, a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Get my heart right, God. You, God, create in me. Help me get my heart right, God. How is God going to help you? You got to use his spirit to be able to see what's in your heart. God can show you what's in your heart. There's something in the subconscious, something embedded in the body of, of the body is below the exterior surface of the body. It's ingrained within your, your cells of your body and, and structured is embedded within the DNA of your body and it's called sin. And it's a highly intelligent being. And they speak from inside your heart. Transgression speaks. It's talking. It's an intelligence. It can talk. They're disembodied, but they can sit inside of you. And transgressions can talk from within your heart. They can talk to you from within your heart. They can talk to you from within your heart. And when they talk to you, you think they them. And you act upon what they tell you. So if you don't want to experience the depression, the rejection, the self-hatred, the suicide, if you don't want to experience all this, this, this swearing and cussing and all of the inferior thinking that you have, then you got to go down there and shut them up. Take the blood of Jesus and wash them out. Behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Did he take them away? Yes. And so he comes inside your spirit, the spirit of your heart, to take him away down in your body of your sin. That's where he comes down. That's why he's down there. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's a mystery down in you. He works at a higher dimension than they are. And therefore, he from that dimension can begin the process of leading you to put them to death that's living in your heart. Are you understand what I'm saying? Christ is in you. Why is he down here? He's not out there. Because the demons are not out there. The demons are not out there. They inside of you. The transgressors, the sin is inside of you. Talking from on the inside of you. And that's why we're looking for the devil. And the devil's coming out of the man. They're coming out of man. They're not in the flying around in the air. They come, they're principalities and powers that are operating inside the man. Amen. Watch this. Look in Psalm 66 verse 16. Come and hear all who fear God, and I will tell you of what he has done for my soul. I cried to him, verse 17, with my mouth, and he was extolled with me with my tongue. And if I regard wickedness in my heart, if there's some wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. You got to come with all your heart. You can't be holding on a couple of idols over here in the corner. You got some lust over here in this corner. You got some pride over here in this corner. 
God wants all your heart. You're supposed to love the Lord that God with all your heart, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. You got to love the Lord. You got to be letting God show you what's down in your heart. And you can't come with wickedness because he is not going to be one of your idols. He says you got to come with all your heart to purge this stuff. God wants us to be pure, purified. And it must take place in the heart. So he says, if I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer for his loving kindness, nor his loving kindness from me. See, God will hear your prayer if you're coming with all your heart. If you ain't coming with all your heart, you got idols in your heart. If you, with my heart, I'm going to seek the Lord. If he's going to hear your prayers, if you're coming with all your heart, he's going to hear your prayers. If, you come, if you're coming with idols, you're still holding on to something in the world. That ain't the way God operates. Do not love, do not love the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The Father wants us to be purified. He wants us to be like Jesus. And everyone, 1 John 3, 3, and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he's pure. I am, I'm, I'm looking at Jesus, his righteousness, his love, and out of Christ. I, out of Christ, I use Christ's heart. I use Christ's mind to conform me to his heart and his mind, which is my heart and my mind. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So I'm purifying my heart. I don't want to have nothing to do with this world. If they don't love me, that's fine. God loves me. If they're going to reject me, that's fine. God still accepts me. God's love is unconditional. Regardless of what the world does to me, God still loves me. And you got to get that down in the spirit of your heart. So you see, if you're going to, if you're going to be bringing idols, you're going to bring some harlotry. You ain't ready to let go of the, the, the things that you got in your heart. You ain't ready to let go of the money. You ain't ready to let go of the You ain't ready to let go this idolatry, you ain't ready to let go of the car, you ain't ready to let go of certain things you made of God. There's some people, they got to give up ministry to get their heart pure. The preacher's got to walk out of pulpit. A lot of people got businesses that they got to walk away from because God never called them. Their hearts are not even, God never, their heart ain't even pure. It's not right before God. So now watch this. Watch this, guys. In Psalms 73, Psalm 73, 1. Truly God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in what? God is good to people who appear in heart. He can bless people who appear in heart. That's all he wants is people to come to him with all their heart. He, see, God, the body of sin didn't pop up when Paul and them popped up. When Jesus was preaching about the kingdom of God was within you, that Christ is within you, when Jesus and Paul, it's not that the body of sin just manifested when Jesus, the body of sin always was there. They just did not have Christ revealed to them as to how to experience the ascension. So this stuff didn't pop out of when the New Testament was formed. People were walking in the body of sin for, since the day of Adam. The aliens, the sin, came into our world. These highly intelligent beings came into our world. And they took, they called the invasion of the body snatchers. They took over the body and they controlled the mind from being inside a man's heart and they masquerade as his thoughts. And when they masquerade as his thoughts, then they can control his actions and make him do deals and make him do things that transgress God's law and they can begin to kill him more with diseases in his body. Now watch this. Look in Psalm 73, 7. Watch this, guys. This is all in the Bible. The eyes bulge from fatness. The imaginations of their heart runs how? Riot. Imaginations of the mind is running how? Riot. What do you mean riot? You can't sit still. Would you ready to sit still? Your you imaginations of your mind. You get to all the stuff running in your mind. Your imagination, all these images in your mind. You can't. It's just running. And where are they running? Down in the heart. You can't stop those voices. You can't stop those thoughts. You cannot thought those images. You cannot stop those imaginations. You can't stop those videos. And if, there's, and if you watch a bunch of horror movies, like they say people watch The Exorcist back in this day. That was a very horrifying movie back in this time. Right now, 
it may be looked at as a comedy. But back in his day, they said people could not sleep for weeks because the imaginations of their heart was running rampant about the, the terror and the, and, the, and the movie cycle, all these movies that out there. People could not take showers because the imagination of their hearts was running rampant. They were living in fear from something that was not even real. The imagination took it to be reality and they believe it to be real, so it controlled their bodies, it controlled their minds, just like Oculus Rift and a lot of these games they do. People actually get immersed in this stuff and they think it's real. Look in Psalms 77, verse 6. Look at all these things that's going on with the heart. Are you all with me? 77, verse 6. I'm going to get into some heavy stuff pretty soon. 77, verse 6. I will remember my song in the night, and I will meditate with my what? My heart. And my spirit will ponder. I'm going to meditate with my heart. I'm not going to let the imaginations and my thoughts run wild when I sit down before God. I am going to take authority over these thoughts. I'm going to take them captive and I'm going to meditate. I'm going to take control of these things that's in my mind. I'm going to meditate in my, with my heart and my spirit ponders. Look over in, look at Psalm 73, 21. When my heart was embittered and I was purest within, then I was, what? Senseless, watch this, and ignorant. When my heart was embittered and I was purest within, when my heart was embittered and I was purest within, then I was senseless and what? Ignorant. And was like a beast before you. See, when you get into bitterness, something pierces you inside your heart and you start acting like an animal, a senseless one. He said right here, I was senseless and I did some ignorant things. Why? Because something is in my heart. Got my heart. Something has my heart. People with bitterness, let, let's see to it that no root of bitterness springing up, causing defilement, the Bible says over there in Hebrews. Something got my heart. And it makes me senseless and it makes me act like a beast. I'm taking the mark of the beast. I'm acting like an animal. That's right there in your Bible. That's why Jesus taught on the subject for forgiveness. Do not, he says, forgive 70 times 7. Because you see, if they get your heart, if they get down in your heart, you got to forgive, Jesus said, from your heart. If you let them get down in your heart, they're going to make you senseless. They're going to make you ignorant. They're going to make you stupid. You're going to do some stupid, ignorant, foolish things because they got your heart. There's something else down in your heart running things. You got to understand this. There's something down there in your heart running things. And if you don't get down there using the blood of Jesus and the power of the cross, you are not going to be able to stop them. Wretched man that I am, who's going to set me free from this body of this death? I'm going to go set, get fresh free from this stuff down in my heart. I'm going to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ is going to begin the process of purifying me with his spirit. Okay? So if you don't want to be a beast, that's why God's going to, un he's going to trigger the whole world. Because everybody's walking in hatred. He says that's because the lawlessness, people's love is going to grow cold. And then he's going to hit that trigger button and the... Uh, Senseless ignorance is going to break out all over the world. People are going to lose it. Look at this right here. This, this would be a very interesting verse. Psalms 81. Psalms 81. 12. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their what? What's down in their heart? I gave them over to their heart. There's a lot of things down in your heart. Jeremiah the prophet said, the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately sick. Who can do it? There are stuff down in your heart that will blow your mind. That's why when people die, they die with that stuff in their heart. They die in their sin. Jesus said, if you don't believe that I'm eating, you're going to die in the sin. Where's the sin? It's down in the heart. The heart was not purified. So he told the Pharisees, if you don't believe that I'm here, you're going to die in your sin. There's something so vile and so wicked in your heart. Once the conscious mind has been released from its breath, its spirit here in this world, it dies in that realm, that virtual world. It dies in that world. 
And when you die in that world, you die in your sin, which is a horror. Why do you think God wants you to purify that thing down there? Why do you want you to wash that out of you? Because if you die in that state, you die in a horror. But thanks be to God that we are operating out of Christ. There's a lot of people in church that ain't operating out of Christ. They don't even know Christ is in them. They love this world. They love this, the happy harlot life, a happy, happy harlot lifestyle. Look at this. He says, to walk in their own devices. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel will walk in my ways. I will quickly subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their adversaries. Those, 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 look at that. Those, those who what? Those who hate the Lord. They hate the Lord. They hate the Lord. They don't want to sit before God and get their heart right. They hate the Lord. They what? Pretend like they are Christians. They pretend like they're obeying. Look at that. Look at verse 15. See, when he gives your heart over, he said, when he given your heart over, you being a fool, he gives your heart over to your stubbornness. He said, those who hate the Lord, verse 15, will pretend obedience to him. They hate him. They go, they go, that they, they hate him, but they are manifesting an activity like they love him. You see the double minded there? They, it says they profess that they know God, but by their deeds they hate him. And those who hate the Lord are pretending obedience to him. But how is that working? God sees their heart. God sees they, they hate him. Because their actions don't line up with their profession. And you're looking at it right there. And their punishment, and their time of punishment, this is the worst state of mind to be in. You can be out there drinking in a bar. You might as be out there on a bar stool to be sitting around pretending obedient. And he says, these folks are going to hell forever. They're going to die. You know, going to hell because they never got their heart right with God. They think they said a prayer and their heart was right with God. And they went right back out there in the world and living in the same sin that they just said they repented of. At least they got around a preacher that ain't walking right. You get around somebody that ain't walking. You have no fear of God. He has none and you have none. And since the church around you, everybody's doing it, then you say, I'm follow the crowd. Because all these people cannot be lost. Now look at this right here. Their time of punishment will be what? Forever. It's going to be forever. All tied to their heart. Stubborn heart. So God gives them over to their devices, and then they go around pretending like they are walking with God, praying to God, Reading their Bibles, but in their heart, they got hatred in their heart. They don't even know they got, they don't even see it. They're pretending. And if you want to be double, that's what, that's what James called double-minded. Okay, now watch, that, watch this, guys. This is all throughout the Bible. Look, look right here, Psalms 119, verse 2. Now look at this. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies. Who seek him, who seek him, who seek him, who seek him with all their heart. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies. They observe his law. They observe his love. And they want to be like him. And they want to be like him. They want to be face to face like him. And they seek him with not some of their heart. Not a quarter of their heart, not half of their heart, not three quarters of the heart. The way you give them to God, you got to give them all the heart. And so when you give God all your heart, you now you says, Lord, search me, oh God. Show me what's in my heart, Lord, so I can put it to death. Show me what's in my life, Lord, so I can die to it. Show me what's in my heart so I can get it out of the way. Because I know that you don't want this wickedness down in my heart and I don't want it either. I want to be like you, Lord God. You follow what I'm saying? That's why you got to love God with all your heart. Now, today, you don't, they, today in the modern church, they think loving God is a work and loving your neighbor is a work. You're not supposed to do anything. Just say the prayer. It's all grace and faith and just say a prayer. What about loving people? You don't have to love people. What about walking the rights? You ain't got to do nothing. But you can sin. You can continue to sin because they capped that sinner's say by Now you keep sinning. But you can't, now you can't walk in love, but you can still sin if you want to. 
you want to hate somebody, you can do that too because you're a sinner saved by... So they, they, they encourage you, but you can't... You can still walk in sin, but you cannot do anything like love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. This is called a depraved mind culture. These churches and a lot of these people in these churches are depraved. Paul said they're depraved. They're rejected in regards to the faith. Uh, I, I, we, don't, we don't want to walk like that. Look at this. Got a sequence all the heart. Look in Proverbs 4.23. Now, this is going to get very interesting. Proverbs, now, let's move into the real meat of this issue, okay? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. 4.23. Watch over your heart with all what? Diligence. How do you watch over your heart? It's not like they didn't understand. They knew what came up out of the heart. But he says, watch over your heart. You watch over your heart because there's something down there. Transgressions can be talking in your heart. So they saying, wake up because the transgressions can make you forget that you have a heart to watch over. So you're not paying any attention to what they are saying to you because they did blind you to the fact that they exist down there in your heart. He says, so you have to watch over your heart. You watch over your heart. And God is going to be watching your heart and looking at your heart. He's going to see if you're watching over your heart. Call a righteous judgment of God. So you watch over your heart, for from it flows the springs of what? Life. Something is coming up out of your heart. For from it flows the springs of life. Verse 24. He's telling you why you need to watch over your heart. Put away from you a what? Deceit for what? Mouth. And put devious speech far from you. You're going to watch over your heart. You're going to put away this out of your mouth and you're going to put devious speech far from you. Now you want to sit down and listen to somebody curse and swear and you want to watch people curse and swear. Doesn't sound like you want to put devious lips far. You don't want to hear it coming at you, if all possible. We know this is a world of, of wickedness in people's mouth. You don't want to hear it, but let them know you're going to sit there and watch it coming out of somebody else's mouth and be entertained by it. You can tell that's not something you want to do. So if you're going to let it come into your heart, it's going to come right back out of your mouth. So look at this. He says, let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet and all your ways will be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left. Turn your foot from evil. Watch the path of your feet. In other words, your feet is your thought life, Paul said. Watch the path. Watch where you're going. Because if you look at your thought life, then where are you walking? You know, a guy's going to walk in a club. A guy's going to walk this way. A guy's going to be walking in this house where there should be walking. He's going to be... He is moving, something in his heart is moving his feet, is moving his thoughts and controlling his body. Watch over your heart. Listen to what's coming out of your mouth and watch what you are doing in secret. God is looking at what you're doing in secret. You should watch over your heart. You have a heart. Watch over it. Now notice what he says right here. With all diligence, be very, very careful. Because there's something down there in the heart. Transgressions are down there. There's something down there in the heart. And if we don't understand Christ, then we can't deal with it. It manifests. Wretched man that I am, who's going to set me from this body of sin? This sin, these transgressions, Paul located them. They entered and they lodged within the matrix of the body, the cells of the body, the blood and the flesh of the body. They are intergrained in the body. And that's why Paul said when you encounter somebody who is in the flesh or when you're encountering somebody who's attacking you, when you're counseling somebody you're wrestling with, you're not wrestling with flesh and what? Blood. You're not dealing with a human. You're dealing with something down in that heart that has incarnated itself in that human and is taking over that body and is using that body to strike at you, to cuss you out, to lie to you or to defile you. And therefore, you ain't battling flesh and blood. You need to get into warfare. There's something in that human being doing this. 
Look in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14. What is this? The backslider in heart will have his fill of his own what? Ways. But a good man will be satisfied with his. The backslider, where is he backsliding? In his heart. You can, uh, you can go into apostasy and backslide in your heart and still be sitting in church saying your prayers, reading your Bible. But in your heart, you have backslidden. You do not want to do the will of God. You can backslide where? The backslider is occurring in his heart. It's happening in his heart. It's happening in his heart. He's still going to church with his backslidden in his heart. He ain't reading his Bible, but he's backslid. He is, he's, got, he's got one way he's doing something on the other, and he's falling away from God. It's called a great apostasy. I'm doing one thing. I'm professing I know God, but in my, my deeds I have backslidden. I deny him in my heart. Transgressions is going on in the heart. So there's something below the radar. He said something is working below the radar here that people are not aware of. You can talk to people today. They tell you they're Christians. They believe in God. They tell you they love God and they want to serve God. But you watch their deeds and their actions is all going to not line up with what Jesus was teaching. Look in Proverbs 23, 17. Look at verse 17. Do not let your heart envy what? I mean, you'd be wondering why you can be envying. I want to be just like sinners. I want to have what they have. Because it's occurring where? In your heart. And if you let your heart, you let all this stuff get in your heart to want to be like the world and be like these sinners out here, he says, but live in the fear of the Lord always. Do not let your heart, don't let this stuff get in your heart. Don't covet what unbelievers covet. Don't desire to be worldly. Don't desire to be like the world. But he says it right here. Do not let your heart envy sin. Do not let your heart. Your heart is doing what? Your heart is doing it. Your heart is doing it. Your heart is doing it. So it's going to control your mind. It's going to control your body. It's going to control your actions. You're going to find yourself wanting to do things and make the money to become just like them because you envy them. So it's going to control you, but they're going to control you from your heart. Everything is going on in the heart. Everything is being controlled from the heart. It's the things that are not seen that's controlling the things that are seen. We understand that the world's refrained by the things that are not seen. So it's something down there controlling you up here, but you ain't conscious up here in the conscious mind of what's controlling you in the subconscious mind. So if the inner heart is operating in deception and envy, and you don't know why you have that stronghold on you, it's because something in your heart ain't right with God. So everything's going on in the heart. But that's the unseen realm. But the Bible says you can see symptoms of the heart manifesting. I'm gonna read, we're going to read about it right now. You can see symptoms of the heart manifesting. You can see symptoms of the heart coming out. And as a matter of fact, people say, God doesn't, you don't know my heart. And then they start talking a strange way and you say, I just heard your heart. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Speaks. So a person whose heart is not right with God tries to cover it in their speech. But they can't help it because a heart that ain't right with God, is going to keep coming out. And so that's how Jesus said, you know them by their fruits. You're going to know by what people talk about, what they're expressing, what's coming out of their mouth, is how you're going to know. Now, we're going to see that in the Bible. Turn to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4, verse 14. Wash your heart from what? So where does evil live? It lives in the heart. Transgression is in the heart. So if evil in the heart, so a person that committed murder, the spirit of murder was in the heart to cause a person to control his body to make him kill somebody. Where is it coming from? It's something that's in the heart. So there's a, in, it is a in, it's not a material, it's an invisible substance down in the heart. It's a thought. And a, this thought form can penetrate into the cells of the body, incarnate itself into the human body, and cause that person to commit murder, cause that person to lie, cause that person to steal, cause that person to covet. That's called evil. It's something in the heart. It's down in the heart. It's down in the heart. It's coming out of the heart. If I don't do like Paul said, joyfully concur with the law of God in the inner man, if I don't find the spirit of Christ within me, I am no match as to what they're doing 
in my heart. Paul says the things that I do is not I, but the sin. Where was the sin? Down in the heart. It's the sin that's doing it. This evil is showing me how to do it. And how am I going to get set free from those thoughts? This sin that's down in the body, down in my heart. How am I going to? I have to turn to the inner man. I got to turn to Christ within me, who is the inner man. He's down there with them. He's down there in the inner parts of my being. Down there, he can see them and he knows exactly where they at. And if I turn to the inner man, turn to Christ within me, he will show me how to put to death the deeds of the flesh. He showed me how to crucify them. Pick up your cross, he said, and die daily, he said. What you're dying to? What are you purifying yourself from? You see that? Wash your heart from evil, O Jerusalem, that you may be what? Wash your heart that you may be saved. So salvation got something to do with repentance. Jesus came, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He came talking about repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Religious people, religious people are the, are the most, I mean, religious people who are doing services for God. They are some of the most hardened people to reach because they truly believe that they are doing the will of God in their religious activities. And they are fully convinced that they have God, but in their heart, their heart is not right toward God. They have never really repented of their ways. Now look at this. He says, how long will your wicked, what? Thoughts lodge where? Within you. Where are they? Lodge within you. They're living inside the human body. They're inside the human body. That's what Paul was saying. This ain't no new thing when Paul was talking about the body of sin.